It's here. We're here. This is flat. Andreas is here, guys. We are here right now. It's starting. I'm just, I'm so excited for this weekend. I'm so excited for yeah. what? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm so, I thank you. We're all excited. <laughs> I'm so excited for what, for what God is going to be, be doing uh, in each and every one of us. I'm so excited for, for the growth um, that is, is going to be happening in our hearts and for what God has to say to us and, and the ways that he's going to stretch us. I'm so, I'm so excited for uh, just the, the unity that we're going to have uh, just as, as we are brought together and just, you know, just community and, and vulnerability, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be really great. If you guys don't know um, already, we're going to be talking about identity. All right, that's what we're going to be talking about uh, this whole, this whole weekend. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to turn myself down a little bit. Is it one for this? Oh, yes. Um, I just feel like I'm going to make this. So, we are going to be talking about um, identity this weekend, guys. Um, and I'm just so excited. Uh, it, it really is going to be just a, a journey for all of us, including me. Um, I've been spending a couple weeks just reading through all my old journals. Uh, I'm just so excited for, for tonight. Uh, what tonight is going to be is just kind of a setting of the stage. All right. So, I, my, name, my name is Chris. Um, so, I know a lot of you guys, and there's some people I don't know, I'm on staff here. Um, I always like to give a, a, a Mac Daddy fun fact. Um, a lot of guys, it's just kind of, it's like wildfire, people start calling Mac Daddy, it's just kind of like a thing. So you guys, you guys can't do that if you want. But, uh, <laughs> so I, I always have a Mac Daddy fun fact that I start off with. Uh, with. Um, my, my Mac Daddy fun fact for tonight is, I am completely comfortable in my own skin. I'm just, I'm, I'm just completely comfortable in my own skin. Um, and, and I want to add something to that as well. So I want to restate that. I, I am completely comfortable in my own skin. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. It, it is an incredible blessing that I can stand up here and, and really truly say that tonight. Um, tonight, I'm just actually going to give like just a little bit of my testimony. Um, but that, that's, that's, that's what, you know, that's, I, that's what I'm, just, I'm so convicted, I'm so excited to just kind of talk about. Um, before we start, I basically have four questions I'm going to give to you right now. So if you guys are taking notes, I have four questions for you to take now, all right? First one is, what do you put your identity in? What do you put your identity in? Second question, where is that identity coming from? Alright, where is that identity coming from? Third, what insecurities do you have? Oh, yeah, look yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so the first one is what do you put your identity in? Second is where is that identity coming from? Third, what insecurities do you have? And the fourth one. Are you comfortable in your own skin? Can you actually sit down and say, just think like, yes, you know what, I'm, I'm actually just uncomfortable in my own skin right now. I have, um, I have worn this outfit on purpose. A lot of you guys have already commented on it. You guys already knew what I was up to. I said, like, oh, you're going to use that in your sermon. I have my, uh, my junior high um, tech champs 2004. I played football in middle school. Now I'm also in high school. Uh, and uh, these are also my go-to jeans. Let me tell you something. I wore these jeans. I probably wore this outfit for probably two or three, four years of my life. All right. And no one ever told me. Okay, until one person, a very significant person in my life that I happen to be married to, probably broke the news like slowly after, like maybe like second week of marriage. She's like, Chris, you have to, you have to throw these jeans away. I'm like, I love these jeans. <laughs> I love them, and this is what I this is what I wore all the time. They're just, they're super. If you guys can't see, they're just they're super baggy, and I love that. It's like you look at it, it's like Chris. Why do you wear jeans that two of you can fit in? It's because they're super comfortable. All right, I love them. All right, I was going to show you something else. I just I, I decided it's not going to be appropriate. I have shorts underneath. I was just going to take my pants off and like be like, joking. like oh, 
I know you guys are doing awkward, but I'll just tell you. Basically, I have shorts on me, all right? For like three or four years, well, not even, like all through high school and most of college, I always had shorts on under my jeans. And Caitlin, right? <laughs> and Caitlin, right? Why? Because you, can all, you never know when something's about to go down. And it looks like, you know, when you're walking down, walking down the street with your friends, and you're like, you know, hey, uh, you know, hey, you guys want to play some pickup basketball? <laughs> Boom! I'm done! I'm ready! You guys want to hit, you know, a 33 period, want to play some catch? Yes! You know, like, oh, like, oh it's kind of, you know, it's kind of hot outside. It's like, that's all right, I got shorts on. All right, so this, this was me. This is my outfit. Okay, I just want to say it right now, I am comfortable in my own skin. All right, this, this is the shirt I wore. These are my baggy pants. And apparently, people, without, without telling me, like, hated these jeans for years. Because uh, finally, Tara, Tara started saying something, and like, can you believe what Tara said? And everybody else was like, yeah, dude, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, I'm, I'm excited for, like, what, what tonight is going to be, guys, is, is I'm going to just, we're going to talk a little bit about what identity is. We're going to talk about a little bit. Um, just about what, what it looks like, how we, how we get it. I'm going to share a little bit of my testimony about kind of what, how uh, God's kind of shaped that in my life and honestly how I struggle with it. Um, and my hope is that, that I, I give you guys permission right now, if you guys are going to zone out, just, that's okay. Just think about those four questions. All right, I gave you those four questions because my hope is that during while I'm talking, and as I'm being open and as I'm being vulnerable with you guys, I'm sharing some of my story, I'm hoping that you start to think through those four questions for yourself. I'm hoping that, I just want to be a spark in your own mind, like, oh yeah, I do actually, I do feel insecure about that. Or like, oh, I have to put my identity in, in that sometimes. And I, I, I just want to just start tonight, we get up here, so we're just setting the table for the weekend. This is not going to be a normal sermon, I'm not, I don't actually have a passage I'm going to preach out tonight, you know, it, it's going to, I'm going to try to keep it short so we can, you know, keep on with it tonight, it's kind of late already. Um, so, so first, let's just talk a little bit about identity. All right, um, identity uh, is, if, if you can just forgive me, please, I, it's what you put, you, it's what you identify with. Okay, I, I know that's breaking a cardinal rule of English, but we know what identity is. But like, basically, it's what you are, are really, I do identify with. It's what you put your value in. Okay, it's what, it's what you feel like you are comfortable aligning with. Okay, so like, I am. Um, I have an identity as a, an Ohio State football fan. I have an identity as, you know, I like sports. Uh, I have an identity as, I, 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 play, I play music. I have an identity as a Christian. Um, I have an identity as a husband, um, as, a, as a new life, you know, staff member. You know, th those are just, you know, that, that's what we're talking about. What, like, kind of what do you feel like you really identify yourself with? And here's the thing, guys, is that the world and the culture has a huge, huge significant impact on not only what our identity is, but also it, it tries to teach us how we're supposed to actually form and create our identity. And you know, I'm, honestly, I'm not, I don't, it's not necessarily a, a bad thing. You know, there's a lot of pros and cons. There's some benefits with, with America and kind of like the, um, the, the individualism and that kind of like the stuff that we, we really hold to. But, the, we have to realize, we have to be on board that the world and our culture is huge in shaping what our identity is. And also from the very beginning age, from the second that we are born, it tells us how we are supposed to create identities. So we're going to talk about that just a little bit. So like, here's, a, here's just a few examples, all right? Um, good, good looks, or just your, your physical appearance, right? That's, that's a, a what, that's, a, that's an identity that you can put Identify with, um, and then it doesn't have to necessarily be not good, good or bad. Unfortunately, if the the anti-identity, you know, as uh, self-consciousness, you know, as, as uh, um, the insecurity. So, do you, like that's just that's an example. And I, and I actually I get I get really sad when I think about this sometimes. It's just so it's so sad to think how much physical appearance actually can shape your your quality of life how it can shape kind of your path 
Um, it's, it's just, it's really, it's really unfortunate. It's really sad to think about it. People, um, I know that's, that's, that's something that people identify with. And I'll just say for all of us, it's, it's in all of us a little bit, right? Nobody is completely just indifferent about the way that they look, right? You have a little bit of identity or maybe a little bit of insecurity either way. It's just that vice versa. It's just a flip of it. You know, so that's just one thing. So, so what about money? What about money and, and um, your, your, your ability to, to have power and to, to buy things? Um, and if it's not money, maybe it's just, maybe it's just status. Um, but you know that, that people can see that you have, um, you have the money to, to, to do what you want. You have the power to influence. You have the ability to give generously. Uh, you have uh, maybe it's a status like a, a neighborhood that you're in. Um, or maybe a family that you grow up in, a prestigious college that you attend, right? Um, there's just there's a lot of identity that you can put into those things, just your, your overall status and in, in, in wealth. Um, what about intelligence? Intelligence is another big one. Um, you put your identity in how, how smart that you are, but also more importantly how people, how smart you know people see you as being. Uh, you you want to be as Especially in the classroom, I know that's just a, a huge, a huge battle in the office. Um, what about character? Now, um, Chris McClure, I don't think he's here tonight yet, but um, Chris McClure talked about this on, on Friday night when he had the last the Friday that we had. Um, basically, he was saying that he really struggled because he put his identity in, in how people view specifically his character, and he felt kind of trapped in a box because he felt like people had these expectations on him, like. You know, oh, Chris, oh yeah, Chris is a really good guy. He's a really good kid. He, you know, he's, you know, I, we, we can we can look up to him. He doesn't do anything, you know, doesn't do anything wrong. And he, and he had this identity that was actually kind of formed around him, and like, and he was he was kind of trapped by it. You know, but that that's another identity we fall into. It's just it's overall character. Um, now, and also just th those those are kind of some some what's of character, if you will. Like that, those are those are what's the culture and the world um, tries, you know, to, to tell you to put your identity in. But what I'm more interested in tonight is, is, is the how. I think that the world teaches, and especially America, especially our culture, is how you're supposed to shape, shape your identity is um, basically your uniqueness, your individuality. And I don't, I, I don't want, I want to stop right now before it's one. Like I'm not, I, mean, I might sound, I don't want my tone to be like I'm putting this down. I'm not, I'm not having any comment whether this, whether this is good or bad. What I'm saying is that this is incredibly prevalent in our culture and especially in our generation. Okay, that you are a unique person. Okay, and that there, you are very special. That there's no one like you from, like, from kindergarten. Yet your teacher's saying, you know, you are a very special person. And just, just be you. Because all you have to do is just be true to yourself. Right? And that's, that's, that's what this world, and basically what this world is saying is that um, you need to find a, a niche that you are unique in. So we, we kind of have this pressure, or maybe even like a, a, a desire, that we, we strive after these areas in our life that we're kind of, it's kind of our, our territory. It makes us unique. Okay? An example of this is, does anybody, like, when I say the word Kobayashi, does that ring any bells? Yeah. Is he he's the, uh, the hot dog guy? Yeah. He's, he's the hot dog guy, right? That's, that's exactly my point. Like, um, so Kobayashi is basically, he, he really revolutionized the sport of hot dog eating. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it, honestly, all jokes aside, it's incredible what he does. It's um, but uh, we were talking about my Bible study this last a couple of weeks ago. Um, I didn't, I didn't know this, but apparently Kobayashi got into some like logistical issues with the, the major league eating corporation or something that whoever runs those things. And he actually was banned from competing. Um, and and apparently that that really kind of kind of broke him. So I was reading online, it's just like it, it really bothered him. I mean, think about it. Like the entire, he's on this world stage. Everybody knows that he is, he can eat the most hot dog for 20 minutes more than anybody else in the world has ever had. Okay, and it's kind of taken away from him. And like, I was, I was like thinking about it, and I heard this story, it's kind of funny, but um, the, apparently the, the year after he was, um, uh, he was kind of banned, he, he was there at the competition. And when they said go, 
he tried to run up to the table and start to just put a couple dollars in his mouth. I was thinking about it, I was like, what did you think was going to happen? Like, did you think people wouldn't notice? It's like, oh, I didn't know there was a sixth person over there. Like, I thought this was only five people competing. So I didn't think that like, people would just let him go. You know, but, but, he, but he was like, he just, he just wanted to be in there. Like, that, that was the niche that he created. I mean, he made this whole thing famous with his records that he beat. And that, that was his thing. That was his niche. I think the following year, he actually he created his own hot dog eating competition, which started simultaneously with the official one. And he, he tried to get cameras around. He tried to, you know, he tried to do it. And it's like, my, my point, this is my point, guys. My point is that I think we can all look at areas in our life that we've tried to fight for those, uh, those niches that make us unique. And what begins to happen is we start to put our identity in those things <coughs> that make us special. That make us, not even special, just make us at least different than other people. You know, because then, then you're, like, you're, you're, like that, you're that person like, oh, you know what? They're, really, they're a really great painter. And you're like, you become the person that just, you know, out of everybody in the world, like the people around you, your friends, they know that you, you're just really good at painting. You know, you're, you're the guy that takes just fantastic photos. You know, you're, you're the guy that can, can captivate a room uh, with, you know, because you're, you're just so funny, you know, and, and, and you're, that's, that's kind of your identity that you get, you know, that like your people like around you, your friends kind of see you in that way, and it's just, like, you just have a unique gift in that. This is in every single one of us. And this is, this is taught by our culture. And again, I, I don't want to sound like this is necessarily a bad thing, but it absolutely gets us into trouble. It absolutely leads us now to, to passive insecurity. When the world tells you, and when you feel pressure to, to find those areas that you have a niche and that is only yours, it's your territory, you will never be able to get rid of insecurity. You're not going to. You're never going to be able to get rid of security. Because here, here's the deal, guys. Try, like, try to follow this this train of thought. It's basically um, the world tells you that you are special. It goes down to a lot of philosophical thought that like, oh, you're a human being, and by human being, by their very nature, they have a virtue of individualism. That just being a human, you are just you, you are unique and you're made valuable. But the world and the culture cannot tell us why. They can't tell us why that is true. They can't tell us how that is true. They're just saying, they're just saying you're an individual. You are a human being, and because you are a human being, you are, you have value. You, because you are a unique individual, you have value. It's, if you really start to think about it, it's, it's circular reasoning. The world cannot tell you why you are special. The world cannot tell you how you are valuable. Those, those niches and those, the way that you are uniquely gifted, the world can't tell you like, well, why that, that is the case and why that, that brings value to your life. If you, so my, my point here is that if we are going to continue on this weekend and we're going to try to just unpack ourselves. My, my challenge is to everyone to look inside your heart and try to think about those four questions. Um, what, what do you put your identity in? Where does identity come from? Uh, what insecurities do you have? And are you just comfortable in your own skin? We have to, for the very first night tonight, we have to understand that if it's up to you to be unique, you will never be able to get even secure. If it's up to you to, 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 to strive, to dedicate your life to a talent, to a skill, to a personality, to a character, if, you, if you're striving after this, if it's ultimately up to you to be, to bring value to yourself, you will never be able to get even security. I just, I, I want to just kind of close out you know, tonight. Um, I, I just want to kind of be, I want to be vulnerable with you guys. I, I want to share some of my life and some of my testimony. Um, 
I wanted to, the re, I have kind of three reasons why I want to do this. The first reason is that I want every single one of us here right now to be on the same page that we all have in security. Every single one of us here. All right, maybe, maybe you're on this side where you're thinking, yes, I'm very well aware of that. In fact, I think I have much more security than everybody else in this room. I think else seems to really struggle. It's like, well, for, for those people in that camp, like I'm telling you guys, every single one of us, I'm speaking on behalf of all of us, we all have insecurities in our life. Or maybe you're over here where you try, you're, you're trying to, to, to never let anyone see that. You're not going to admit that. You're strong, you're confident, you know who you are, and you know, you, you, as far as you're concerned, no one needs to know that you're insecure. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you guys the freedom also tonight. We are all here in this room battling insecurities. And my hope and my prayer is that some of that stuff can come out. We're going to have small groups. We're going to be talking. We're going to be sharing life. And I just I want, and my prayer is that we can have beautiful growth. And that through the following messages that are going to come, that like, real truth can seep into our hearts. And that we can start to fight those insecurities. Um, so for, like, for me personally, um, as, as you can see, like honestly, high school was, was, a, was a really great time. Um, I know it's not a lot. I, I know it's not necessarily everybody, uh, but um, I, I just I, I had I had a good time in high school. I, I was in a small uh, small high school, and um, I, 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 was, I was I was popular. I was liked. I was in a fun fun group. Um, I, I, I I found my niches. I absolutely did. Um, it, was, it was within it was in music, um, and I, I just had a, I had a good healthy kind of. Self-esteem, immature, but very, you know, kind of solid self-esteem in high school. Here's, here's what happened to me, guys. I, I came into, I came to Ohio State, um, and I felt the cliche saying of little fish in a big pond. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys felt that, if you had something similar, if you've really ever felt that in any other situation, but I really, really struggled. When I came onto Ohio State's campus, I looked around and I realized I was not, I was not very special. I wasn't, I wasn't the cool guy on campus anymore. Everybody was cool. I wouldn't seem to really think I was cool anymore. In addition to that, um, I, uh, I, I've already kind of shared with some sermons before, like this, I was, I was a music major. I started off as a percussion major. Um, and I know I've said this before, but I, I had to audition to get in. Um, and when I got in, it's kind of a cool story how I got in. When I got in, I was the worst one. And that was so hard. Every day that was in my face. I don't know if you guys know a lot about music, uh, just a major, but basically you're kind of competing every single day, honestly. You know, because you're always performing in front of your peers. You're always being kind of critically judged. It doesn't have to necessarily be a, a, a divisive or harmful thing. But it, it absolutely, you're competing every day. And I was the worst one. And everybody knew it. It was so clear. I knew it. I, everybody in the studio knew it. I was just, I was just barely hanging it on. On top of that, guys, I, I never really connected with my floor. I felt so alone. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you, if many, anybody in this, in this room really, I've, I've really uh, let this off my chest the way I'm doing tonight. I, I felt so alone. And for some reason, I just couldn't connect. And, and everybody else on my floor seemed to really uh, just get along. They seemed to be friends. They seemed to enjoy. They always hanging out with each other just in their rooms. Um, I started to think, like, man, yeah, I, I don't think people want to talk to me. I don't think people want. I don't think I want people want to be my friend. I was reading through my journals, uh, kind of like, these past couple of weeks. And I, I'm just reading through it. I'm just seeing how broken I was. Um, I just, I just thought that I, I just I wasn't interesting at all. I thought I was just a very boring person. I, I, I legitimately believe, like, you know, of course I don't want to not hang out with people. No one really wants to talk to me. Why, why would they? I'm boring. I'm not. I'm not interesting. I, I can't tell. I can't tell jokes. I'm not like engaging. I don't have the same like. Uh, I don't like my you know, things in life that I, that I enjoy are not the same as the uh, people in my. I, I was really, I was really struggling, guys. On top of that, my best friend, um, I've known since first grade, he was having a, he was having the time of his life as freshman year. 
He, his swing was incredible. So you guys know what I'm talking about. But like, he came in like week two. He's got like best friends. And so I, was, I would call him up and be like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, you know, I want my sweet. We're going out to show them we're going to leave. Okay. I guess I'm going to practice more in profession. And like, it was, it was very, it was very, very hard. I also felt in incredibly inadequate. I just felt like I had expectations that were on me as, as a Christian, as a man, as just, you know, this overall you know, student. And every day I was like, man, I can't, I just, I can't live up to these standards. Everybody else seems to be doing just fine. I'm just, I'm completely inadequate. These are, these are real things, guys. I, I'm not just, I'm, 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 I'm bearing my heart here. I'm not just saying these things to try to, to, to go to emotion and try to, to have you relate with me. I, I, it, it, this, I'm, I was broken. I was incredibly broken. You see, the thing is, is as I, I, I began to see, and I can see looking back, is that I was, I was trying to work on my identity myself. I was trying to build my value with my own hands. And I could not shake insecurity. And eventually everything broke down and collapsed. And I was just in this, what I would say is a severe depression for at least a year and a half. With no self-worth. Constantly just degrading myself. Constantly saying, you're not good enough. No one wants to talk to you. You're not likable. When you try to, to when you try to so hard for those niches, when you try to be unique, when you try to be special, you're not going to be able to shake the insecurity. <coughs> I just like, as you know, just on, a, on an up note, like as I said, as I started off, my Mac Daddy fun fact was, I'm, I'm today, I am comfortable with my own skin. Tonight, I, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stop talking. I don't know what time it is, but, you know, if you guys want to hear more about the, the good side of the story, things, things start to turn around. But that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of this weekend. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to talk about how, like, how do you fix those, you know, those insecurities. If you can't create your own value, where does that come from? How do you actually find a true identity? Where does that true identity come from? How do you shake those insecurities? How do you get, how can you get to the point? How do I get to the point where I'm comfortable in my own skin? Where I can care less about what you guys think about my genes. So again, those, those four questions. What do you put your identity in? Where is your identity coming from? What, your, what insecurities do you have and are you comfortable in your own skin? Um, what we're gonna do tonight rather than this is we're gonna break up in smaller groups um, we'll talk about a little bit of that more a little bit later, but the groups are kind of right over here. Um, and my, my current my hope with me being a little bit vulnerable and open with you guys is that you would kind of rise up to the same level of vulnerability within your groups. So be thinking about those four questions even as we continue to sing and to continue tonight. I have I have some questions if you want to write these down. I honestly they're the same, but um, you're going to have a small group tonight. With that small group, I'm just Three questions I think. The first one is what do you put your identity in? Okay, so just talk about that. Be open. Be vulnerable. I know maybe, maybe there's going to be some people you don't even really met. Just, just stretch yourself. Just let, let yourself be open and be vulnerable. What do you put your identity in? And then the second question is um, where, what is the time in your life that you felt insecure? So we don't have to bear all our insecurities in the very get go. Just, just start with kind of a safe example. What, you know, what, uh, where, what's a time in your life that you, you really felt insecure? What was happening? What was causing it? And the third, like, what, um, what do you, what do you think? What do you hope to get out of this weekend? Those are three questions. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The, what, what do you hope? Um, to get out of this weekend. Yeah. So that's it. We're just we're just setting the table. Just be thinking about those things. Um, we are going to have answers to to these questions.
I know that at this point I'm, I'm waiting for your name to concluding tonight. Um, there's not a lot of like, oh, well, what do I do with that? Don't worry, it's going to come. We're going to continue to kind of just grow through this together. It's going to be a process. It's going to be fantastic. I think it's going to be beautiful. I think God can really, really shape and completely give you with some new identity this weekend. Um, so I'm going to pray for us. We just have a couple more songs. Um, and we'll have just a few announcements. And we'll break down our groups just, just for a little bit. Maybe, maybe 20 minutes that helps. Um, Heavenly Father, uh, Father, I, I thank you just for uh, the incredible uh, just adventure that you, you've taken me through. God, I, I, I look back and I know that if I can talk about that year and a half and you, you were there with me, you know. But Lord, you, you were with me. You were, you were so faithful. God, looking back, I can see how you completely rescued me from that depression. You completely gave me new life. You, you just completely renewed my identity where I can stand up to you tonight and I can say, praise God that I am comfortable in my own skin. Lord, that is because of you. And I'm praying that you would just work that into all of our hearts tonight and throughout this rest of this weekend. Lord, draw all these things out of us. Lord, bring us to a place that we can be vulnerable, that we can open up, that we can kind of see and, and relate to each other and see that we have similarities, see that we all have insecurities. Let, let us voice them out to you and Lord, let you be our perfect healer. Lord, let that your love just come into our lives and just give us a new identity, Lord. You are just a good Father, God. Love just 